Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we have this monstrosity right now and we're going to adjust it a little bit. I want to be able to still use the wheels while the hydraulics are extended. So let's go ahead and recover just this portion. We don't care so much about recovering the base portion, but let's rethink entirely the way this is set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into the VAB and we're going to go ahead and remove the the extant wheels. Well, maybe not fully remove. Ah, uh, yeah, we're probably going to fully remove them. So let's get rid of the extant wheels, and we're going to have to retool this a little bit. But see how there's these connection points at the end of the uh, at the end of the hydraulics? We're going to be making use of those. So I'm going to remove these over here as well. Well, the the front and back hydraulics here. We'll, we'll go ahead and get rid of those, and then we will move this guy, go back to mirror symmetry, we'll place him right here, and then copy that, and place this guy back here. Now they're currently rotating entirely the wrong direction, so we're going to fix that. Let's go ahead and use the rotate tool, and hopefully this will rotate them correctly. Something along the lines of, do we want it straight down or angled out slightly? I think straight down will work for now. So let's use the tool here and do the same thing. There we go. Back to the place tool. And let's go ahead and make sure that these are set correctly. They are perfect. Next, let's go to structural and get a strut here. Do we actually need a strut? Or should we just put directly wheels? I feel like we need a strut. Modular girder segment is too big, so we'll go with a cubic octagonal strut. It's not octagonal at all. I have no idea what they're talking about. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put wheels on this thing. Look at that. They're actually correctly rotated. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Doing things the way they're supposed to be done. Who would have thought? So let's go ahead and turn off steering on our back wheels here. And the question then becomes, how's our steering directionality? Only one way to find out. And how's our motor directionality? We, we didn't do any rotating, so I think it'll be okay, maybe? Maybe, we'll have to find out. By the way, these are, the, these hydraulics that I'm using are new parts in the uh, in the breaking ground expansion, I believe. So they are still vanilla, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much perfect. So the main problem here that I foresee is, what if we're too high? We can't get lower than this. We're probably going to end up moving these up to to offset that. Because we'd rather be too low than too high, considering we can only go up. So let's go ahead and bring this thing down over here. And let's just look at how our height is. And yeah, this is this is actually much more stable. So that's nice. Okay, what's our height looking like as is? As is, our height is looking almost identical. Actually, we still want to be lower than this. Don't get me wrong. We absolutely do want to be lower than this. We also want to turn over this way a little bit to get our angle slightly different. Because, like I said before, it's better for us to be too low than to be too high. The major exception is if we land on this thing. So we'll need to prevent that from happening. Okay, let's turn in a little bit, a little bit more. Because now, theoretically, we can just get to a position like this and be like, okay, we are substantially low. Let's go ahead and raise our hydraulics. So we raise our entire thing up to, say, 0 0.3. 0 0.3. And then the same to it at the back here. 0.3. How's that looking? Uh, still a little low. We can go ahead and raise that up to 0.5. And 0.5. That's still slightly low. 
So we can then bring that up to 0.62, or we'll, we'll just go to 0.6. This is so much better of a system than what I was trying last episode. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can dock. We'll set this guy as our target. Control from here. Ooh, and look at that. Control from here no longer breaks our wheel rotations. <laughs> That's nice. And there we go. Perfect. It's a little dumb looking, but it gets the job done. So let's go ahead and recover that. That is a successful proof of concept. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to make it so that the thing starts off a little bit lower and then start construction on a sky crane. So let's just go ahead and uh, put this guy up over here. Now we're going to have to adjust the rotation from this, but that's okay. We're going to do the same thing over here. Nope, that's not what I intended to do at all. I'm going to just undo that. We're going to grab this guy and place him up here. Okay, and then we're just going to use the rotate tool to do something along the lines of that. And the same thing here. So that that way we should start substantially lower to the ground. Oof. We weren't in mirror symmetry. Okay, let's go to place mode. There we go. Now the question is, are we too low? If we are, that's just a matter of having these default to a slightly higher extension. But the way we'll know that we're too low is if we are hitting the ground with the science module. So this is going to be our standard system going forward for how we're going to attach modules using these telescoping hydraulic cylinders. And it looks like we've got good enough clearance. Let's just go ahead and head down the hill, see how this looks. Okay. I mean, we're going to be on flat terrain. This is going to get interesting coming up through here. Like, let's head up this direction a little bit. Yeah, see? That's what I was concerned about right there. And that indicates that it was a little bit too low for that specific use case. Of course, in what situation, when we have this thing on another planet or another moon, are we going to be going that fast? And in what situation are we going to be hitting a like 90 degree angle in the ground like that? If we see that coming, we can always just do this, you know? It's not a big deal. Realistically, we might want to have this start at about 0.5. So right about there for landing, and we can always lower it later on. So that way we have a little bit extra pad room. Okay, the next thing that I want to check if we go into robotics is what is the impact tolerance of this? 12 meters per second. Okay, fair enough. That's higher than the wheels. So, then we need to turn this into a uh, slightly more robust thing that can actually land itself. And we want it to land itself in this orientation. So that's something that's going to be interesting. So, realistically... I feel like we might want to do this in the space plane hangar. It's going to get a little awkward, for sure. Anyway, we slice it, because partway through, we're going to want to transfer over to a different paradigm of forward, if that makes any sense. I don't know exactly how to do that, either. I'll have to figure that out. Let's stay in here for now, and uh, for the purposes of a test, I want to just go ahead and put on 
for right now, four of these guys facing downward. About like that. And this is just for a thrust to weight test. This isn't doing anything. So what I'm going to do is once we get out here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on infinite fuel. I, I, I realize this, this isn't going to be super informative. However, it will be for me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on infinite fuel for right now. And I'm going to need to remember to turn that back off. But let's just go ahead and see what our thrust to weight looks like. Surprisingly good. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and turn infinite propellant back off. So we learned a couple things there. One, we learned that four of those is enough to lift this thing in curbing gravity. So strap on a few fuel tanks, and that should be sufficient in minmus gravity for sure. We'll go ahead and go back to the vehicle assembly, and let's start making this sky crane. So the question then is. How are we going to attach this thing? I mean, obviously, when we lift it off, we didn't fly straight up, right? Because these are a little bit forward. The center of gravity isn't perfect. That's fine. That wasn't the point of the test. So let's go ahead and go into the coupling. This is what I want. Size 1.5 to coupler. It's a little on the large side, but maybe. I have no idea if decoupling that will break the solar panels. We'll need to test that. So then the other thing that I'd like to do here is we're just going to, on top of that, add in a modular girder segment and then a, uh... yeah, actually that should be fine. We'll slap on in mirror mode, something along the lines of this should do the trick. And then we would have these engines be basically like this ish. <laughs> now I don't expect that to be fully straight still, but let's go ahead and slap on a small fuel tank. I think like a T100 for right now. That will almost certainly not be enough fuel, but that's okay. This decoupler needs to be up here. 242 meters per second on Kerbin. What would that look like on Minmus? 255 meters per second. That's not a whole lot better. I mean, that's not really enough to land. Well, it's enough to land, but it's not enough to land super safely. We don't need fuel ducts, right? Let's go ahead and just add in a second one of these. 484. And then the question is, is this enough? Well, we have we have several questions here. Are we going to break our wheels when we fire this? When we decouple this, are we going to break our solar panels? Is this enough to lift in Kerbin? Or on Kerbin, even? What's our thrust to weight? 1.02. It technically is enough to lift us on Kerbin. Incredibly slowly. But uh, that should be interesting. And then we'll build our rocket down here going down. And then we'll put this in a giant fairing. What could possibly go wrong with that plan? Oh boy, this is going to be exciting. Come on, you can load. There we go. So technically... This should get us up there. Now, this is going to be super awkward. Do we have a uh, guidance system that can lock to maneuver nodes? Because that would sure be handy. But for right now, this is going to be really weird. Perfect exactly what I was looking for. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, revert to vehicle assembly. And as expected, we've got some issues with our center of thrust and center of mass, it would appear. We had a significant rolling issue there. Now, I'm wondering if there is a reaction wheel in this. It's probably not a very good one, realistically. Do we want to put another reaction wheel, like maybe in the back or maybe on top of this? I don't want this structure to get too tall. But a small inline reaction wheel would there would be nice. And then maybe we would have like a separate control system up here. I mean, we're not going to be able to lift off of Kerbin with this, right? But that's fine. So we, we did definitely learn that we didn't break our wheels when we launched. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a... Fully expect that that brought us down. Yeah, we're not going to lift off now. That's fine. I don't actually care about that. Um, what else do we need on this thing? We need a pod. We don't really have anything. But if we put a hex here, hypothetically... Control point forward, control point reversed. I'm not sure what that actually does. But we need to have a probodobodyne on this structure here. But I just want to test this real quick to see if we can toggle our control system between vertical and horizontal, if that makes any sense. And that might be what that option was doing, but I don't think that's available in-game. Actually, it is. Hello. So it's pointless, then. Okay, good to know. Now, there are a couple of other things to test. Let's go ahead and turn on brakes, and we're going to fire this engine. <laughs> Uh-huh. So the decoupler didn't work. But now we can lift it. Because we've lost some weight. Okay. Why didn't the decoupler decouple? And yeah, we're pitching forward. Reason for that is because we do have a little bit more weight in the front. So why didn't the decoupler decouple? I'm not sure. However, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And next episode, we'll see if we can figure out what's going on with this decoupler and get this thing, hopefully, on its way to Minmus. Subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.